everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of Ask a Leader. Last week, you have heard from Teresa Benedito on how to become a prospecting guru. So this week itself, we have invited Maybelline Wong, our goal director on how you can be a great, fantastic storyteller. So hi, Maybelline. Hello. Hello, hello. So Maybelline, I heard from my grapevine that you recently just turned full time. Wow, we need to applaud. Everybody clap for her. <laughs> Good job, man. I mean, it takes a lot of courage. What uh, motivates you to do that? Well, Ipe, you know, um, I had been in the workforce, employment workforce for the last like 20, 20 over years. And I must say that, you know, um, I was doing um, USANA on a part-time basis for a good like six years. And, you know, while juggling between a full-time and a part-time, mm. you know, I was also assessing, you know, the community that I was gaining from USANA and also my previous employment. I do like my job previously, but I find that, wow, USANA is something that, you know, I could embark into because, you know, I could like, you know, after work, when I come into the community, I will always be reminded to stay healthy keep up with a good healthy lifestyle so i have been you know in this in this um you know in usana for six years right i started to feel that you know i'm already turning 40 this year right i started to feel that you know health is so important i need somebody a community to keep reminding me that you know while i'm doing something i must constantly keep myself healthy and that is why i decided to do full-time Agree. I think uh, a lot of youngsters, they actually do not understand the importance of health until something happened to them. Yes. I mean, uh, welcome to the 40 club. I think you haven't reached that uh, real 40. Your birthday is still not here yet. Yes. Uh, but I also, also agree with you. Friends around me, they are starting to feel that, oh, I hear pain, that pain. No. Uh, they haven't been taking good care of themselves. But if they were to, like you, started six years ago, they could have uh, maintained or better support their general well-being. Yeah. So I think this is really a great mission that you are embarking on too. So, um, for after turning full time, what have you been doing? Is there a different drastic change? Have you been fully maximizing all the free time that you have now? Okay, so if you know, one of the things I wanted to share is the comparison between me previously as a part-time and a full-timer now. All right? So previously when I was a part-timer, I had to focus uh, a lot of hours I spent when I was in my full-time job. And Yusana was only given a pocket of time to focus, but I really put the, put like 200% when I'm wow, focusing 200%? on 200%? Yes. So now it's 400 Yes. So now when I'm doing 400% now, full-time, I can tell you, even when I'm eating, I'm sleeping, I'm constantly thinking of how to do the business. Mm. I think you are an inspiration. I mean, for a person who is doing part-time, with a 200% effort, you actually hit goal director in this six years period. Uh, you, it takes a lot of perseverance, a lot of patience to, to really maintain your consistency, put in the effort to, to reach that level. I think you have built really a stable uh, growth throughout the years itself. Is there a big why or a big drive behind uh, what's keeping you here today? I think it's actually the community. Um, one of the things is also Dr. Maroran's vision is to be the healthiest family on earth. I, I totally can re uh, resonate, you know, to his vision really well. You know, constantly, you know, while building a, a team that also think uh, like-minded like me, I also want to think about how to help my team, you know, to spread the news on how to be the healthiest family on earth. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree on that. I mean, uh, maybe I have heard a lot of uh, uh, conversation that you have uh, made with uh, your teammates, your prospects, and sometimes I hear, I sit there and try to listen, you know. <laughs> but I, I feel that you are a great storyteller. Do you believe or do you agree that you are a great storyteller? I think I'm more like a chatter. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm considered myself as a storyteller, but I do share stories to people who need to know about what am I doing in USANA. Yeah, so I will share like a lot of stories. It can be my story, it can be my team member's story, or it can be somebody who is very inspiring story to share with somebody who I feel it's relevant to their position um, based on. That, that day itself. Yeah. I, I personally don't think you are a chatter. Uh, I think you know how to hold a conversation and deliver message across. I think this is really, really important. Um, and everyone out there, you do not need to be a chatter. 
Because today we're going to share with you some techniques and some skills that Maybelline actually adopt to, to really deliver message to storytelling to your um, teammates, your prospects or even your, your friends. You know, to, to really share with them how do you actually feel and influence their decision, influence their action. So, um, can you share with us, right, uh, why in your perspective, why storytelling is important and how often do you actually use it? Okay, let's, let's talk about usage first. Mm. I use it all the time. If I have to, all the time. yeah, most of the time, I would say at least all the time when I have to talk about Yusana, there will always be a story to tell. And uh, how do I use it? I mean, you, your next how question was like, how often? It? How often is all the time? And the first question was uh, why do you think? Why important? do I think it's important? Mm. I guess it's important because it is you know it is a connection to make that person feel related. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So storytelling it's really important because you need to make that person have a sense of like you know I'm in that position as well. And if somebody else is in that position and she did well, you know, in this business, you know, I should also be telling her that somebody else's it, it will be it will be re- it will be relevant to her, and she can also apply to it. True. I mean, uh, it, it also it also tells everyone that you do not need to have your own story. You can actually utilize a lot of different story out there to share out and influence and help people make decisions. I, I think I really love that thing about engagement. Mm. I think uh, a lot of times, you know, we are like doing company B2B business perspective. We go there, hey, do you need this or not? But in direct selling, it is totally different. Yes. It is more of building that relationship. We are not just looking at what is in front of us, but what is behind them. That kind of a reputation that you are building, yes. that kind of trust that they are, they are giving to you, you know. Yes. So, um, in, in what you do in, 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 in developing your story, Oh, do you do you do anything like do you have a preparation? Uh, do you really go and craft out your stories? You know, is there something that you do that helps you deliver or help you prepare a great story? Mm, I think one of the things is you need to practice. Mm. Firstly, you need to prepare what exactly you want to share, you know. And later on, when you keep practicing and with different people, you will start to realize that you know your story can be customizable according to the people that you meet. But the, the, the gist of the story is there. Yeah. So oh, that, that's uh, how I feel. Can, can, can you quote me an example? I, I think it is really important. It's a, it's a <laughs> secret that she has. Uh, what do you mean by customizable for different group of people and yet you remain that gist of the story over there? So sometimes some people, uh, maybe their language, they are more like Chinese um, educated. You need to translate it to Chinese, right? You, you cannot be telling your story and then this person is Chinese speaking and you try to tell them in English format. The person may not be able to get you. So you need to find a way to translate it. I think translation is one of the factor. The second thing that I look at is also simplicity. Some people level of language, you know, if you mm, go mm, to, um, you know, if you use very bombastic words, sometimes they may not be under, able to understand. So you need to relate according to their level. Yeah, that's, that's how I mean by customizing according yes, to their needs. I, I totally agree. I think uh, one thing is also to put them in a scenario that they can, that is foreseeable. Yes. Like, you know, maybe you do not feel it now, but me being in the 40 now, I can share with you that this, 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 this. Yes. I think that is that customization that you are talking Correct. about. Wonderful, amazing. Um, I mean, wait a minute. Do you mean that when you talk to someone for example today I, I, I have a meeting with you do I go like maybe Lynn, I have a story to tell you <laughs> does it go go like this I mean it can be very awkward do, how do I how do I kick off a story I mean it, I, I is there a conversation starter or is there a, a pre uh, pre statement that you made before you tell your story I see so I think one of the things that how conversation actually begins is usually I would ask that person how is that person doing mm. I think it's always a question of un- understanding that person's position today based on the point of contact and then you would want to see whether is that the right time to even start a conversation on my story how do you know it's the right time Oh, it depends. So some people may, may, may come to you and then they, if they start to rant about their, um, you know, their down 
and they have a family issue or you know any personal issues right you know most of the time you may want to sit down and listen to them rather than you interrupting them and tell them about i have an amazing story to share yeah, yeah. It I would be very awkward Correct So I, I feel that Having a listening ears Is really important Because you really can understand That person's position In that perspective Because sometimes When you are saying some, That person is down Maybe she's feeling Very negative And you come in Very positively That person may not Take it very true, right true, you know true. empathy yeah i think we have to empathize that person's situation though you are very happy you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. yeah so i feel that and, and another thing it's listening skill is important because when you get to know the person better that person would also appreciate that you were there at that point in time and of course the person will look at you very differently and that is where somehow sometimes it can lead to a conversation and say wow you have changed you know what have you been doing you know it, it, it always leads to that kind of yeah. yeah it's it a it's opens a up. yeah it's a soft skill. I I can't say it's really like a hard skill, but it somehow it can relate back, and people will realize that hey, you are so different like how you were in the past. You know, yeah. So that's how I feel that you know having a conversation engaging, you must keep your ears open first, and of course you have to observe the body language of how they feel about things or so, and that is when you can see how you can start to bring in the topic in and start to you know. Start off the topic from there. You know. One thing I need to uh, uh, compliment you is that you are not only a great uh, uh, storyteller, it complim you complement it with your body language mm. and your facial expression. If, if you have been, uh, if you can zoom in the video a little bit and you can see uh, when Maybelline she talks, her eyes sparkle and he, <laughs> her facial expression is very, very animated. Mm. And it makes me feel very like you are very interested in the conversation itself. I think that is also one attribute of how you can be a great storyteller. Mm. I, 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 very great tips, and I think we can learn a lot from her. Is there one specific story that you usually tell to people? I think my my main major story to tell of me telling people it's about many people like to ask me why do I have a full time job. And I'm still putting my time on you, Sana. It's always this question. It's like, you have a stable job. Why are you focusing on something on the side? You know, this is a, a topic that many people like to ask me and say that you should just stick to where you are, you know, one stream. You should just focus on that and just move on. I, I, I have a message that come in, although I don't have a phone, I can hear someone asking this question. Can you share your story? My story. Just a short one. Uh, a story as into yeah. why am I doing yes, this? Yes, yes, yes. The one that you have been uh, frequently telling people very often. So, I, I mean, when people ask me why do I have, why am I juggling between two? Why am I doing this after work, you know? I think I always tell them is that, you know, your main job will always be there, stable, but it will come to a point that there will be an end point to it. Retirement, it can be due to your sick. It can be due to many other reasons, personal reason you got to leave. But I find that in USANA, whether you are, you know, sick or whether you feel like you're stopping or what, right? USANA is always there. So I told them that, you know, it has become an avenue for me to really have fun with positive people around. So I, I don't, I, I always tell people, I never look at it like a business business where I have to be so serious and, you know, just want to close the deal, you know, in that kind of perspective. But what I felt that it was a place that I could grow, you know, in terms of developing myself, interpersonal skills, you know, networking, you know, helping another person to grow as well. I thought this was what USANA is all about. Does it change when you first came into this uh, business? I mean, a lot of people join USANA because they either want help or they want uh, a more additional income. That, did it change or, uh, I mean, did you come in like, oh, I want help, I want uh, additional income. But then as you step into USANA, you realize that, hey, this is the kind of environment that I want. I, I can sort of hear it like this. From yeah, me. so at the beginning, right, I felt that, oh, it's just a network marketing company just like any other companies out there. But when I came in and I started to attend classes and I look at the dynamics around the, the people around me, I started to realize that it was like something that, you know, it was something that I could grow on. I could learn from something and I could, you know, 
I, I was telling myself that, you know, why not I be an expert to this? You know what I mean? And I started to develop this mindset, a change of mindset, you know, to be independent mm. as well. I, I don't want my, like, my mentor to tell me that I must do this or do that. In the, in the beginning stage, she did tell me that, you know, to be serious in the business, you need to do a certain rules, you know. And of course, to me, I feel a business is a business, right? I, I would learn, I would love to learn from somebody who is successful as well. Yeah, so I took her words and I, you know, started to do it. And I meet up with her very regularly. And I tell her, what can I do to make myself a better person? It's always that question. Yeah, so that's how I feel that it's not just a business, but it became a, a path and a journey where I keep growing every single day. Yeah, I, I think story do not need to be those uh, very sad, you know, you cry and you weep. It can be very inspirational or it can just address a specific need or provide a single solution to somebody. So if you feel that you need to come up with wow, all the crying stories that we come out in the convention or USANA uh, events itself, do not need to worry about that. Just a simple story that you can really just you know, connect with people that is really, really sufficient. I would like to go back to what you said just now. It, it set me thinking because you were saying that USANA will not leave you. Mm. USANA will not leave you. This is very, very true because uh, because we are all in the 40 clubs now. <laughs> we, we are experiencing midlife crisis and I start to uh, realize that a lot of people when they are being retrenched or when they retire, they started suddenly like nothing to do. There are also people who treat their job as everything. They are mm. everything, you know. Mm. Uh, go work, go holiday, they also work. Go here, also work. Then when they ask them why, they say that this is my own and everything. This is what defines me. Mm. And once you lose this job, you lose your whole sense of purpose in life. So it's, I'm glad that you bring this up because this is really good for a person well-being and mental health. You yes. feel that there is something there for you to support you throughout your whole life journey. So USANA will not leave you unless you choose to leave USANA. I think mm. this is really an important message that you bring <laughs> yeah. out and you set me thinking, I just have to sidetrack a little bit on this This one. story was actually shared by my doubt, my, my, my really? business partner. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. Wow. When she, because she got retrenched mm. and she shared her story that when she was retrenched, she realised that USANA was still there for her. And I think it, it really made me very, very uh, touched that wow, you know, I, I brought her into a, a community that she felt that she was never neglected or deserted. Yes, yeah. I, I think this is uh, something that uh, it is true. Yeah. It's really true. There are a lot of people with a very great story like, like your, your teammates. I think this is something that we need to uh, repeatedly share with people because sometimes they do not see it. Yes. And we need to help them to see some of the possibilities, some of the circumstances through storytelling. Yes. And I, I think uh, we, we, we do not need to have just one story. Right? I believe you have uh, maybe tons of story for you. I definitely do have tons of stories to oh, share. Drama series. <laughs> yeah, drama series, <laughs> ups and downs and you know, support and everything and how Yusana actually changed their lives as well. Uh, does it change as you... Uh, how, how do you determine what story to tell? I mean, do you always tell one fixed story or, or there is a, uh, a background understanding or checks, you know, you do before you decide what story or like what you say, you ask questions? Usually I will ask questions first mm. and then I will see what kind of stories I should share, you know. What, what I, I mean, if I were to say that, oh, recently, uh, recently I've been gaining weight. What, what kind of what I will kind share of? My, my business partner's uh, Sharon's story oh, wow. <laughs> who recently just yeah. gave birth but prior to her giving birth she actually gained a lot of weight and then after she gave birth she lost a lot of weight and she looks so much healthier now wow. and then of course um, you cannot just say right you have to show pictures mm -hmm. you know because weight is something that you can see it's very very visual yeah Wow, I think uh, she just demonstrated a point you do not need to tell your own story you can always leverage on all your stories of your teammates, your crossline, and anybody in USANA. As long as it fits into the person you know, needs. Usually someone, you maybe you will be afraid, oh, if I were to tell someone's story, maybe they will go with the other person. No, actually, if you were to share with them, you are engaging with them, and you will be able to tell them, trust me, 
let me help you. I mm. think that will be that uh, reason for them to want to buy from you or, or to be in this business with you. Yes. I think that is really, really important. Uh, Maybelline with um, Singapore opening up, I think a lot of us have been meeting people, but there are still times that people may find it, uh, they don't want to meet up in person. Yes. Or they don't have time. Mm. Is it possible to tell a story virtually? Have you done that? And how did you uh, execute it? Uh, I think it's possible to do it virtually. I, I do respect people's uh, position because we are so used to meeting up virtually nowadays. And I think it's perfectly fine because when you want to tell a story, you know, usually one of the things that I would really um, inform the person through uh, virtually is, you know, this session may take about an hour. Mm. Would you mind that I can share with you some mm. stories? Yeah, so sometimes um, during that one hour, I will tell them stories in between. Yeah, but I will make sure that the, um, like you know, as we as promised, we have given them an hour. We'll make sure that we end within an hour. Mm. Yeah, because you don't want to tell a story halfway and the person tell you, "Sorry, I got to go." Because yeah. virtually, you can the person just cut, just correct, cut you correct, off. Correct, correct. But in a cafe, you can still, you know, you can still linger a while more true, and kind of thing. True. But virtually, when people, especially when they are cold contacts, mm. when they are very, you know, they tell you that their time is up, their time is up. You can't share a story for too long. Mm. Yes. Have you ever shared story using text messaging? Do you think it is a good way? Actually, I do. I do mm. do it in text with people with my warm contacts. Ah. Yes. Mm. And then sometimes I would show like um, uh, pictures, like show them certain links of um, certain um, uh, some of my business partners because they share testimonials and they talk about their lives. And I say, go and go and follow them. Because they will share their daily lives. Yeah, I, I think this is really important because I cannot just share one picture to, to, to show you that her life has changed. Mm -hmm. But I think Instagram or even Facebook has become like a life resume. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it that becomes, is yes. different. I, yeah, so you, when you see a person is alive in Instagram especially or even in social media, any forms, that person can see that person's day-to-day -day lifestyle and that person will assess whether is this a genuine case or not. But the thing about uh, doing on social media is that your story has already been posted once. Mm. Do you need to repeat it again and again and again? I mean, your audience may change. Yes. You know, there may be new people, but the old followers might be, oh, you know, it's the same story again. Do you have this kind of like yes. uh, uh, hurdles? You know, what, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts about it? Okay, so basically, I do have a story from the beginning in USANA. It was very impactful. Um, I do bring it back sometimes. Mm. And I do know that there will be my usual followers who say, there she goes again, you know. Mm. But I feel that, hey, I have new followers as well. I, I think they have the right to know, you know. And sometimes I will actually, you know, what I would do is, like some people may ask some questions and I will actually relate them back to my archival poses and say, you can take a look at this one. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's okay to repeat the old um, um, stories, but don't do it too often. Yeah. yeah, don't do it too yeah. often. Maybe a shorter version. I mean, story can be very, very long with it. I think yes. what I have been following you, a, a, a lawyer follower of yours. <laughs> um, I've been reading, you know, all your um, story sharing on Instagram. So uh, it, you don't go too long. You don't go long winded, but very punchy with uh, emotions, you know, with uh, facts stated in. I think it is uh, very well done and, and your teammate can actually leverage on that. Yes. Just share, I think it is very, very Correct. Good. So sometimes I will actually tag them when I post a story because mm. I feel that it's worth sharing to everybody. Mm. Yeah. Do you share your teammate's story? Yes, I do. Is so I told them that if you have a story, share it with me as well. Mm. Yeah. And if I see that, posting it in social media, I will ask them for permission or anybody else. I will say, hey, do you mind if I share your post? Because I, I'm, I'm inspired by your post. Yeah, so I think that storytelling can be leveraged, it can be shared. I, I totally agree. I, I feel that um, coming from another person's mouth is even more powerful than coming from oh yourself mm -hmm. yes. and when people were to say oh this uh, Maybelline she what 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 I, I think people will be like wow your perspective of her is so positive I want to know her I want to meet her I think 
that will be a very good way of sharing story again you do not need to share your own story you just need to share other people's story or have your story shared by someone else i think mm. that will be fantastic someone sometimes people embarrassed no yes. shy yeah the one la, the one la. but actually that will that get your outline to share that would be fantastic idea right yes wow uh, amazing um do you do you uh actually draft out your story first to be honest yes i do especially mm. in social media mm. um i would think through mm. and i to me i'm a person that I, whenever i craft something i don't write what i want to see but i also want to write and think from the perspective of a person who is new or a person who has been a, a regular follower and make them um feel how i feel things mm. so i sometimes i tend to be really very careful sometimes a post can last me one or two days to really think through whether i want to do this or not yeah so i think it's very important because you need to write with tech yeah you, you need to think from a, a perspective of another person how that person feels when true. you are posting something true yeah uh do you actually uh come up with an I, how do I how should I put it? Do you actually come up with a, a newer version of your stories? Because in your six year, you cannot be telling something that is six years ago. You know, yes, and correct. And people will be like, "Oh, old story that was so long ago, outdated." Correct. Do you do you keep your story uh, relevant or how how do you? Yes, I do. That? I do keep my stories very relevant because six years ago when I started, if you look at my post, right, I come in like a like a trainee. You know. I'm like exploring. I was in the exploration stage, but as I go through after on the six year, you know, it's like a maturing stage already. <laughs> yes. You have to talk about, and of course, some people will always say the maturing stage is it like the end already, mm. you know. But I want to give that kind of um 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 feeling is that you know learning never ends. Mm. You know, you have to keep on learning and growing and developing. I I wanted to keep up with that kind of statement to my followers. Yeah. Yes. Wow, amazing, amazing! So, uh, you will be if you want to know more about Maybelline's story, you can actually follow her on Instagram or Facebook. I think you are more active on Instagram, right? Yes, yeah. I'm not active in Facebook at all. Uh, yeah, you know, forties are all like that. We are now Instagram, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, people. Yes. Ah, it, we belong it, in that in that <laughs> category now. I wanted to make myself look cool, but I cannot say out that face now. I don't look cool anymore. Well, uh, thank you very much for sharing with us today. Um, for the benefit of our audience to know you a little bit more because uh, Maybelline you may not see her quite often but now she's full time you're going to grab her here and <laughs> let you see her face <laughs> until you're very tired of it right <laughs> but honestly we don't be tired of me <laughs> don't be tired of her um, can you share with us what do you really love about you Sana? as I mentioned from the beginning of the conversation it's the community. Oh, I wanted to give a quiz to the audience. Ah, yeah. yeah. yeah my la. Community. community. Community is really very important. To be honest, I was exposed to many other companies out there before. In my many years, I, I mean, since I started. Not, not many, la, 20 years. 20 years. La. Okay, 20 years is quite a long <laughs> experience. And I was exposed to many, many companies. Mm. And I think one of the things that really made me stay, and this is, this is the only company that is really the longest, mm. all right? It's the community and the culture and the support. I feel these three components really will can it can make somebody stay for a long period of time, yeah, and it I is totally worth is yeah it's worth it's worthy it's totally worth it. What exactly about the community that makes you feel like, uh, it, 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 you wanted to be with? I feel that the community really look into everybody's um, you know when somebody needs help they will be there mm. they give advice and they don't give silly advices mm. they give you know factual telling you what is factual mm. and they tell you what is right and what is wrong they don't want to do things that is popular but we want to do things that is right yeah so oh. that that is what i feel that it's really important because when you do something that is popular and it's not right you know it has a lot of repercussion mm. but what i like in the community is something that you know a community must be very ethical you are doing the right things so that we see long-term benefits to it yeah. Mm. So that that's my put, that's my take for this. Yeah, I I I totally agree. I mean, uh, people who care about your growth, people care about your well being. I think this is something that is very hard to find. Mm. And coming to you, Sana, you feel like you have found your life mentor, people who uh, can guide you in in all aspect of life whatever experience that they have they will just share with you and you yourself have a lot more option to choose from. Yes. I think that is very 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 important itself. So um. 
I heard that you are going to global convention. Yes, I am. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, are you going with your teammates or yes, the I am. Community thing that you are talking about. Yes, our whole community is going. Uh, the kampong is going. The whole kampong is going. Kampong. So, um, I mean, global convention is something because it's very costly. Yes. Uh, what really makes you want to go on such a uh, trip, convention trip itself? I feel it's the experience. You know, if you come to Singapore, I mean, in this office here, they'll tell you that you know we 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 manufacture our our products in Salt Lake City, and then they tell you that you know it's it's uh, they are the main manufacturer, mm. right? And they and they tell you that the plant is in Utah, Salt Lake City. So when I, when the first time I came here, I was a bit like, uh, wow, you know, if it's at Salt Lake City and there is a convention there, why not make a trip there to take a to take a look at how supplements are made. You know how how often do we see, you know, your vitamins at home? Ah, you get to go to the plant to see how it was done. True. Yeah. And there's a story to tell. Mm. You go there because you want to tell story, right? Yes. <laughs> I think it's a very good, a very big platform for you to hear from uh, uh successful leaders from um all different countries that you Sana is in, and they have different uh target audience. They have different market segments. They come from yes. different background, and they all have great stories to share. You know, and uh, furthermore, when you go to um our home office, you get to see the manufacturing process. Like you, what you say, you know, if you were to go and buy the off the off the shelf supplements, do you ever get to see how your products is being? Produce or manufacture, no right. Yes. But this is a great opportunity for you to go there and witness. And when you tell your story, it become much more convincing because yes. you are there to witness. Correct. The whole thing. Yes. And and I mean, you've been to so many AP convention, and that is one of the reason that you have so much, so many stories to tell to yes. people out there. Correct. What what is is there any specific? Stories that really impact you and uh, when you attend a convention. Okay, I want to share this story, right? It is going to be very uh strange. Okay, so what happened was when the, at the beginning, at the beginning when I was in Usana, right? I didn't really understand the importance of attending convention. So one day, um, my mentor Helen, she said, "Hey, get people to come for convention, whether they are new or they are mm. existing business partner, just bring them in." Mm. So I remembered. I attended my first year convention, and I thought, and, and actually, I went there on a part time. I didn't complete the entire convention, oh. so I didn't feel that impact. Look, look, see, see, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, look, see, see. Just wanted to see what's going on. Mm. I felt partial, lor. You know, I felt very partial. And then I remember the second year, it happened again. Helen said, "This time round, you must go all out. Like you apply leave, you just go for that 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 full full event." And then I remembered that I actually invited. Sharon, which is my business partner, and and that time she was very new to Usana. She doesn't know what's going on, and I told her about Usana, and I said, "Hey, there's this convention. I think you should at least come." Yeah. So she told me that she didn't have much time, but she was she could make it for the opening ceremony. Oh, okay. That yeah, yeah. So one. that so to me, I was like, I don't know how much she will feel about this opening ceremony, but let let's give it a shot. Yeah. So I took the ticket. I bought a ticket for her. And then I said, okay, just go in. And I remember it was quite late. It was after work. And when she went in, she was so wowed by the by the ambience. Yeah. She said she didn't see that Suntec can fill in so many people. Mm. And then when she saw everybody was cheering, and when Dr. Marawens came out and he made his speech, when I looked over, I saw Sharon was crying. Wow! I was like, are you okay? Then she said, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, my 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 hair my my the hair on my skin is is I'm having this goosebump and it's really scaring me. I'm like, oh my god, did I bring her at the wrong time, you know? And I think later when I went back, she sent me a very long message and she said, you know what? This is a journey that I think I should consider. This guy is amazing. He is like you know, and she was explaining to me how she felt the event. She said the event felt like a U two concert. Wow, U two concert! Yeah, oh my God. And she said that, and she said next year I want to do it full time. You know, mm. and she attended. So subsequently, wow. every time when there is an AP convention, she will be there, and she will be going to US Global Convention with me as well. This trip. Wow, wow, wow! So you can see that there are a lot of different opportunities. You know, like our leadership summit. 
our um, incentive trees, our co global convention, even Singapore convention itself, uh, we even have a mid-year celebration event that is coming up. All these are uh, talking points, these are areas, these are places that you can really learn and hear stories that you can go out and share and really impact and help change someone's life out there. Wow, fantastic, amazing, yes. amazing. <laughs> so, last question for you. Uh, what advice do you have for new business builder uh, who are eager to kickstart 2020 in USANA part-time? Okay, my advice to you guys, especially you are already a distributor, all right, and you are very new, and now it's already mid, almost mid of yes. 2022. Yes. Uh. My advice to people who are doing part-time, always remember this. When you sign up as a distributor, you are already one leg into the business. Never treat it as a hobby. Yeah. Never to treat it as a yes. hobby. Take it seriously because it is a business. It's just like anybody who set up a traditional business out there. Nobody will want to take it as a hobby, right? So I always feel that firstly, you never take it as a hobby. Be very serious. Keep learning. There will be things that you have learned in the past. And if it's, you find that you know, it's not relevant or after, learn, after going through many classes, you find that, hey, how come it doesn't sound quite right to what I've learned in the past? I would like to advise you to unlearn and relearn because that is the time you will transform. All right? And because you know that you're in the right team, okay, you will follow what your mentor will tell you to do because what they have done, they have already experienced it before. Yeah, and don't ever... Um, be defeated through failures True. because I can tell you whether you are an employee a traditional owner or whatever you are doing right there will always be failure in life yep. yeah. yeah and always pick yourself up and tell yourself it's okay I will do it again I will try it again yeah, so that is my advice for newcomers because that was how I've been through from the beginning I know that there will be days that I will just keep you know slipping and fall but I just keep picking myself up again and again and it's been six years. I'm still doing fine, you know. Thank That's you all. very much. And not forgetting to put in 200% efforts. Wow. 400%, 400% for me now, yeah, 200% for them. 200% <laughs> for uh, part-timers, that's the basic that you need to put in, but you can put in two hours, but 200%. That yes. is the basic for part -timers. I think it's definitely doable. Doable, It's right? doable. Because you see, in my job, right, it requires me so long working hours, 8 to 8 sometimes, or 8 to 10. But I still managed to squeeze that two hours out from 24 hours. Yes, amazing. I think it's doable. Amazing. Well, thank you very much, Maybelline. Um, to everybody, thank you for your time. I just want to show you all how good a conversation Maybelline <laughs> is because this is all unscripted and she managed to give us so much information <laughs> and have to handle my question blow one blow and do the other at, right at the spot itself so a uh, great uh, mentor to learn from and if you want to learn more uh, you may want to approach her and uh, ask her for some tips you know uh, she's now has uh, 24 hours <laughs> and we try to promote her as much right now she still have a uh, she's do, doing 400% all of time is being used up for prospecting meeting people and I, I really admire her for that you know uh, congratulations to you Maybelline thank, and thank you, you once again and uh, please Watch out for our next episode for Ask a Leader.